As you read through the Gospels, you will inevitably come across some long genealogies. In fact, if you're starting from the Gospel of Matthew, the very first thing you are presented with is Matthew delivering a genealogy leading up to Joseph, the husband of Mary, Jesus' earthly father. You could say his stepfather, in a way. The Gospel of Luke, in chapter 3, after telling us the Nativity story, also gives us a genealogy. Matthew's genealogy starts with Abraham and goes all the way up to Joseph. Luke's genealogy in chapter 3 of Luke goes backward all the way to Adam. Now, I've talked about this in regards to reading other books. See, these long lists of names, names, places, who was whose father, and, and we even have that very prominently featured in the Gospels themselves. So, what do you do with these? How, how do you read these? What should these mean to you? Well, remember that part of the Gospel is history. The history of the Jewish people, the history of the relationship between God and people of faith going way back thousands of years, and how that history brings us up to the time of Jesus. So these genealogies are a way of relating that to us, telling us all these names. Now these names, in many cases, are people of faith who God had a relationship with and who God made promises to. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the patriarchs, David, Solomon, these are people of faith who weren't just Jesus' ancestors, but were also part of the long-lasting story of God's relationship with man. And of course, in those lists of names are also people, some of the descendants of David and the ancestors of Joseph, who were not faithful. These people who were wayward, who God gave warnings to, and in some cases ultimately punished. And that's also a part of the history of faith, and the history of God's relationship with his people. All of it leading up to Jesus, the Savior. Now, when I read the Gospel of Matthew, for example, I'm very excited about Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 4. You know, Jesus is baptized. He goes out into the wilderness to fast for 40 days. He is tempted by the devil. He resists. He comes back out of the wilderness, filled with the Holy Spirit, and begins his ministry. The Gospels are exciting. They're full of action. They're, they're showing Jesus to us, telling us about Jesus' words and his actions, his power, his commandments, all the things that he expects of us, and why we should listen to him. But those same authors who related all these things to us also wanted to relate to us Jesus' ancestry, these genealogies from Abraham to Joseph or from Adam to Joseph. So a part of me wants to say, well, if Matthew and Luke, who are telling us these beautiful, powerful gospels that mean so much to us, if they wanted us to know about these genealogies, well, then there must be something to it, even though Sure, those aren't my favorite chapters, those aren't my favorite parts of these Gospels, but they're there for a reason, and they mean something. So, whenever I read the Gospels, I don't skip those. I read them simply because the authors of those Gospels want me to read them. That's why they put them into writing, so that whoever reads those Gospels will read those genealogies, read about Jesus' ancestry, and this list, the, the, these names that have meaning in the history of faith, in the history of God's relationship with humankind that leads up to Jesus. So those are my thoughts on that. Please let me know what you think. Leave a comment below what you think about the genealogies that are presented to us in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3. What do they mean to you? And how can they enhance our reading and understanding of the gospel? I really look forward to reading whatever you have to say. Bye for now.